to your nation through you. Amen. Amen.
Overcomer. For the previous, welcome to the edition of the May edition of the encounter, which is team the missionary act. We have various encounter for our messages for man for my man of God from our meetings, the, pre the previous encounters and the worship and what feast. We have several overcomers experience which have come and have so many experience, and we have so many testifier who has come with their various testimonies and sit down and, and, and hear from people who has a overcome an experience in our, in our meetings, in our foundation meetings, in World Feast, in the encounter and in various our marathon and so on. So I'll be calling on some of our overcome experience to testify what they what they have seen, what the glory of God in this ministry, in our in our encounter and our world feast. I'll be going on sister Mercy John. Sister Mercy John, can you please you know, for her? Brother Tosi John and Brother Testimony Omoli. Can you clap for them? Can I have a clap of a clap as an overcomer? Thank you. the Lord. My name is John Messi and I'm here to testify to the glory of God for his power. Um, a week ago, someone chatted me up on Facebook and told me that his sister-in-law is very sick, that she has been struck down with headache, a very terrible headache, that she's almost running mad, that I should pray for him. So I began to pray for him, asked for her name, and began to call her name, speaking in tongues and praying. Then the next day, he told me that the lady is fine, that she even went to church. Praise the Lord. Can I have a welcome up, clap? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, I want to appreciate God for his goodness upon my life. Uh, on Friday, last week, uh, during the mission team prayers, um, Papa was praying for us, and one of the prayer and declaration he made was that strangers was going to favor us. Well, I took that prayer personally, and um, I organized a reading class, and I sent the flyer to him prior that time, and I, I shared it on Facebook, and suddenly I saw um, a friend. I never, I never knew her. She just tagged me that she was going to sponsor 10 persons for the reading class. I want to appreciate God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May stranger blesses you. May you find say stranger will favor you. Okay, um, praise God. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, I'm um, here to testify to the goodness of the Lord of how God delivered me from kidnappers during my NYC year. I know that some of you people might have um, come across my testimony on Facebook, but um, to the glory of the Lord and to encourage someone here, I would just like to share the testimony again. Permit me to read from my phone. Okay, how God delivered me from kidnappers during my NYC year. My testimony. 
on this faithful day i began to have the burden to embark on a three days fasting and prayer i never knew why the burden was so strong in my spirit so i took an issue from my fellowship um nccf umaya abia state president to allow me leave the family house that is the lodge and to go stay with a friend staying outside the house for the three days retreat then he permitted me to go during the retreat i prayed more in the spirit studied the word sang praises since the holy spirit did not give me any template on how to go about it on the last day of the retreat i called one of my mentors to pray for me while he was praying he said he perceived the enemy trying to seize my life thus he rebooked it i ended the three days retreat the holy spirit laid it in my heart not to eat breakfast in three days time again even though i just finished a three days dry fasting it was hard for me but i thank god that he helped me to yield so i left the house to workplace that is three days after while coming from my workplace to take keke tricycle back home suddenly a man came deceitfully asking me for direction why he claimed to be a stranger i innocently agreed to take him to where he wanted to go why we stopped a bike man to take us to where he was trying to locate unknown to me that both of them have agreed prior to that time to kidnap me for money Bro, bro, testimony can give you straight answer. Let the people waiting overcome mind. We want your overcoming experience. Okay, hallelujah. All right, I'll just go straight to cut down the long story short. I was taken to a bush, a very thick bush, and suddenly they started mounting pressure on me to start saying some incantations. That if I don't say the incantation, that um, I'm going to die. So they started mounting pressure on me, but I told them that I have faith in Jesus and that the faith I have in Jesus negates all the incantations. We thank God for the testimony that he was delivered from kidnappers and the Lord has smacked him at him. And thank you. And yo. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the testimony. Hallelujah. Okay, so they started mounting pressure on me that I should say the incantations and all that, but I told them that I wasn't going to say anything they asked me to say so at a point they got frustrated and they left me in their bush and took my phone and left so i want to bless the name of the lord for helping me for helping me and from saving me from this kidnappers i pray that his name will be glorified forever in jesus name hallelujah hallelujah for my online testifier he said my infection vanished he said during the encounter i saw Pastor Steve on and Opposed to Abiyoye, each of them were holding a jar of oil, but Pastor Stephen and had an issue with information and oddness all over. This revelation, the information vanished. Praise the Lord. The test fire favor gifts. I want you. I want us all to keep to the testimony. Let us sit down and also reflect on this testimony. And we, our man of God, praying. I know we have our, our prayer point with us. And we, our man of God making declarations. And we have a word. We have a dramatic encounter in our in our prayer in our prayer. We continue to experience with, with our testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. You can reach out. I would need this mat. You can reach me for. Sorry. Who are standing and they are smartly dressed, waving their hands. You can read them for your testimony or me, the identified attendant, or reach our online customer care at 081 60 56 1011. 081 come again 60 56 1011 and you can also like our Facebook page where we have testimony where you can drop your testimony make it train and I testify chat room the Lord bless you and you have an overcoming experience in this encounter in the mighty name of Jesus thank you hallelujah praise God praise God praise God if we're really excited about those wonderful testimonies, can we praise the doer of those testimonies once again? <laughs> Hallelujah. We can do better than that. Let's praise the God who is the doer of those wonderful testimonies. 
Well, welcome to another edition of the encounter. It's always a wonderful and exciting experience to stand before every one of us here, looking at our wonderful, beautiful, handsome faces, seated together, gathered in the presence of God to experience what the Lord has in store for us this month. So on this note, I would like to welcome everyone here. You're welcome to the May edition of the encounter. Please turn to the person seated next to you and tell him or her you're welcome to the encounter. We are all welcome to the encounter. And first things first, before any other thing, we would like to welcome some special persons and ministers. We would like to celebrate some persons who are present at the encounter for the very first time. If today it happens to be the first time you are present here with us on land at the encounter, please would like you to please rise to your feet so we can celebrate your presence and ministers. Uh, first time as we want to celebrate you please do rise to your feet wherever you are please let's celebrate them as they rise to their feet we love you we celebrate you and we're excited to have you here today with us glory to god it's only it's always wonderful to have um please remain standing please do remain standing we'll attend to you very soon please rise to your feet it's always a wonderful thing to welcome our first timers who are joining us for the very first time. While you're on, on your feet, our hospitalians will hand you a slip which you're required to fill. You're required to put in your details so we can have your details with us. And also, please, after the meeting, don't be in a hurry to leave. After the meeting, we'd like to meet with you at the back of the hall for just some few minutes. So please don't be in a hurry to leave. And if you've been handed to sleep, please do well to impute your details and your information. And the Lord will bless you. And of course, we would always encourage you, being here today, you're definitely going to have an encounter with the Lord. So sit here with a ready heart, ready to receive, ready to have an encounter with God. And the Lord will definitely meet with you in Jesus' name. If you've been handed to sleep, then you can go ahead and have your seats in the presence of God. Please let's celebrate them once more. As we all know, this is the encounter in bread and the borders of divinity, a meeting that is set by the Lord to meet with the quest and the desires of men in our time like this, in a time like this, and also in a generation like this, and also in this end time. This is a meeting that has been brought forth in order to see that men experience the possibilities that are in God. It's a meeting that is set forth in order to set the hearts of men on fire. It's a meeting that has been set forth in order to set forces on fire to be set into the field. Harvesters of the souls of men who have paid now with God and walk hand in hand with God to see that the kingdom of our God is brought down on earth and it is made to be in heaven. And it is made to be here on earth just as it is in heaven. And as we all know, the encounter comes up every last Sunday of the month here at St. Augustine Hall on Finley. And of course, this is a place where you should be found every last Sunday of the month. It should be demarked on your schedule. Come along with your friends. Come along with your family. It's a place for inspiring the hearts of men and to experience the presence of God. And the encounter is brought to you by Sufi Foundation. Sufi Foundation is a non-denominational and interdenominational ministry. What this implies is that we are not affiliated to any ministry. We welcome every denomination and any denomination. We are not a church. We are a religious organization. Everyone and anyone is welcome to be a part of ours. And aside the encounter, we have our meetings. We have a weekly meeting known as the Worship and Word Feast. The Worship and Word Feast is a replica of the encounter. It's more like having the encounter experience every week and it comes up every Sunday aside the encounter Sunday and its time is 2 p.m. Prompt. It's a place where we come together to worship God, we experience the presence of God and we feed on the word of God. And also on Fridays, we have our prayer therapy. As we all know, prayer is what we need to energize our spirit men to come against the attacks of the devil. Every Friday, 3 p.m. prompt, we have our prayer therapies. We pray, we press, we build capacity, and we empower ourselves. The venue for our meetings is at the Sophia Foundation Center, which is located at Pensilua Quarters, just beside Olongola Hospital, Pensilua Quarters Cover. We would enjoy everyone present here to please make it a date with us. You will definitely have an encounter with us. You will definitely enrich your spiritual life. 
by being a part of us. And also to everyone who desires to be a member of Sophie Foundation, you can join up with our um, meeting days, any of our meeting days, and from then you will be directed further on what you need to do. And as we all know, we are a click and break ministry beyond the walls of this hall, beyond the walls of our center. We have an online family, we have an online function in the ministry. You can like our Facebook page at Sophia Foundation to follow us online, to get our updates, to get our messages, to get our songs, to get updates on every meetings and every programs we'll be holding. You just search for Sophia Foundation online and like the Facebook page and you'll get updates from us. Also, I believe we have our books and messages, messages from our man of God, his in-house ministrations and also his external ministrations, worship and word feast messages, the encounter messages are all available for download at the S Foundation that's blogsports.com. The S Foundation that's blogsports.com. You link him there and you get to download every messages of our pastor and also of our woman of God pastor Phineas T on our gym, all available for download and also the books of our pastor are available for download at describessf.com that's ng describessf.com that's ng you download books by our pastor and also we want to notify everyone present here that's just at the back of the hall is an extension of Divine Wisdom Bookstore International. Now, Divine, Be Divine Wisdom Bookstore International um, is a library book which distributes books. They have books available on purpose, marriage, spiritual growth, books on finance and business, and also books on politics. A wide range of topics available for you to purchase from. Perhaps there's a particular place that you need to develop yourself. Of course, we know that. The books of men are like an experience, a journey into their life. So we can get this information from these books. We have authors like Kenneth Hagen, Tede James, David Oyedabom, David Ibiomi, Sam Adeyemi, David Yonge Cho, Miles Miro, Joyce Mayer, A.W. Souza, and on and on. All available just at the back of the hall. You can just throw there and get a copy of whatever book you need and also this is to notify that divine bookstores is available at lagos abijak Huni. all of these outreach places you could link up if you desire to have a link with probably a bookstore where you can get books either for distribution or any of this and also we would love to notify everyone present here as we all know just like the last scene of the encounter we are taking in our prayer request so peradventure you're here and you're yet to submit your prayer request please do well to write it now in a short while, the hospitality units will go around to collect the prayer request. So just write down your prayer request in a paper and hand it over to the hospitality unit so that as, as when the man of God will be praying for everyone's prayer, yours will be included and you can definitely export a testimony. And as we all know, this is a ministry that is run on finances available for um, sewing and we are open to whatever it is that the Lord lays in your hand to give or to sow into the ministry. It takes money to set up things like this. It takes up money it takes money to run programs like this. If the Lord lays it in your heart, please do well to sow into the ministry account. And if you have to crash seeds, you could drop that alongside the offering. While the offering is going on, you could drop your seeds. And if you need the bank account details you can get it from the hospitality unit or the protocol members. You can just ask any of them and they will hand it over to you. And also, we will celebrate every person that are coming from different locations to come and join us. We want to celebrate those from JBTS, we don't know if you are here yet. JBTS, those from Okini, different institutions that are joining us from far. And yeah, if you're here, you could just wave your hand. If you're joining us from outside Kaba, if you're joining us from outside Kaba, just wave your hands wherever you are. Please let's celebrate them. We appreciate you. We thank you for your sacrifice, for coming down and making it here. We pray the good Lord will meet with you, the good Lord will bless you, and the Lord himself will encounter you as you make the sacrifice in Jesus' name. And also we want to notify you of a special program that will be coming up next week Sunday, 5th of June 2022. It is a special program that we anchored by Sophia Foundation of uh, a three a three program which includes naming your spouse.
can remarry and marry from home. And also included will be a special, a special session known as Ask Fina and Steve Onaji, which will include a, quant, a question and answer session where you can come along with questions concerning relationship, concerning marriage, and concerning other areas of life that you would want to get answers. This program is coming up next to Sunday at the Sophia Foundation Center. Definitely you shouldn't miss it. We'll get to know what it is about naming our spouses and can you marry? Of course, you have to know if the person you are linked up to is someone you can marry and what does it entail to marry from home? All these and more will be getting to learn at this special meeting. And so everyone present here is a judge to make it there and the time is 2 p.m. prompt on Sunday at the Sophia Foundation Center. And the Lord blesses each one of us as we place it in our hearts to make it a date on the day in Jesus' name. Once again, this is the encounter. We will soak, we will pray, we will learn. We will be transformed. It's a must experience. Sit back and enjoy the experience. We celebrate you. We celebrate yourselves.
course, you can do something better for the Lord. Can you celebrate Jesus one more time? Can you celebrate Jesus louder? Hallelujah. As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall never cease. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. We've come to that time in the encounter where we get to sow our seeds to the Lord because the same way cold and cold and heat never cease, winter and summer never stops, the same way harvest and sowing does not stop and no man with his right senses would um, expect an harvest without sowing something. So today I want you to just put in something into your envelopes that has been given to you and raise it up high as we pray. Raise it up high as you uh, stand on your feet and begin to speak to it. Begin to speak to it. Say, Lord, you made a promise. Now this word was a promise by the Lord himself. It wasn't, a, it wasn't anyone. It was the Lord speaking. And he said, as long as the earth remains until I come, seed time and harvest will not cease. Say, Lord, you have made this promise. And as I give my seed, as I give the seed to you, Lord, I stand on this promise, on your word, to proclaim harvest. Can you begin to proclaim harvest upon your seed? Begin to proclaim harvest upon your seed. Say, Lord, I proclaim harvest upon this seed. I proclaim harvest upon this seed in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we make proclamations that everyone who has placed something into these envelopes, whatever it may be, Lord, we stand upon your word and as you promised that seed time and harvest would never cease, Lord, may your harvest come speedily in the name of Jesus. I release your harvest to you speedily in the name of Jesus. Thank you, righteous God. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. You can be on your seat. The protocols will come to you with a basket and do well to just put it into it. For those who might be needing their account details, um, you could go to any of our hospitality units, any of them, with this uniform, just tell them and they will give you the account details so you could send something to the account. And yes, like the announcer, as our sisters announced, we are also open to seed, we are also open to giving for the for everything we run, for everything you see around, it is money being spent. And so if the Lord places in your heart to um, sow a seed for the movement or for the running of this ministry, please do well to do so. And as you do so, the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Uh, give the Lord a big hand of applause as you welcome the ministry of the Lord.
God sent to this earth was Adam and the Bible says when God made a garden in the garden because for you to be effective as a missionary in this garden there was the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in verse 17 of Genesis 2 before you get to verse 17 in verse 9 the Bible says there was the tree of knowledge and the tree of life you cannot effectively be a missionary if you have not tasted of this life because it's this life that you transfer to people and people be the death is coming back to life because you yourself you are living it means if you have not experienced life you can't give life it is what you have experienced you can give you are going to tell God and say today Lord make a missionary with life that I emit energy everywhere I go there is a river that breaks forth out of me can you open your mouth and pray that Lord give me this life give me this way this way the God kind of life shake it take it break this shake it take it break this shake it take it break this in Jesus name we pray we are still going to be praying for this life when the people left Egypt to go to the promised land God speaking in Deuteronomy 29 verse 5 he said when I led you out of Egypt for 40 years he said did your clothes wear out the sandals you wear did not wear out 
I begin to study how could people for 40 years be in the wilderness and their clothes, you still see the clothes as if it's a brand new clothes that they bought. This is the reason. The Bible says when the people ate of the food of the angels, that same man that they are eating is what is also preserving their body. You cannot evangelize, you cannot be a missionary if you have problems in your system, if you have life problems pressing you up and down, up and down. You are going to pray to God and say, Lord, as you send me to the mission, also minister to my need. Because there is a need that you that need that God needs to give you to equip you for the mission. Can you open your mouth and pray and say, Lord, via this encounter, as a man of God, please minister, minister to my need. In Jesus' name we pray. Genesis 2.17 The Bible says, But the Lord told them not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God did not instruct them not to see it. God said, Don't eat it. Because if you eat it in the day you eat this tree, you shall die. The God did not say in the day you see it. Because there is a there is power or in the tree to speak through sight. I'm going to explain to you. The Bible says God already told them that they should not eat the tree. It means that they know the, they know what it means to eat the tree, they will die. So they can discern between good and evil. So it was not after Adam ate the tree, he had the understanding of evil. He already knows what it means to do evil, but he has not internalized the knowledge. He only gains at that knowledge. He does not have the knowledge in him. So God says you can keep looking at the tree and tap from the knowledge by sight but don't internalize the knowledge because when you internalize that knowledge it can corrupt you and now when the man of God stay here and he begin to speak you might know he might not lay his hand on you but when you begin to look at the man of God you can internalize the revelation within you and you begin to function as a living missionary why the Bible says beholding him and we are changed when you see him we shall be like him when we see him, you are going to say, Lord, walk on my side today, that as I begin to hear the word, I will begin to see you as you are. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. In Jesus name we pray. In Deuteronomy 23, if you read from verse 5, speaking about Balaam, the Bible says, and the Lord turned his curse into a blessing. Now you cannot do the work of a missionary if you are operating under a curse. Because the Bible says that it was in fact. Do you know that Noah intentionally cursed Canaan so that he can weaken Canaan ahead of time when the children of Israel was going to take over them? So the curse was to weaken them. So now Balaam came to curse the children of Israel. But the Bible says the curse was converted into a blessing. So you should not be worried when people begin to speak against you because what they say is a raw material to form your blessing. Because the curse has been converted. It means if there is no curse, there is no conversion. So the more the curse, the more the ability for God or the more raw material God has to convert things into a blessing. You are going to say, Lord, as you send me forth into the mission, Field. Bless me. Convert every negativity in my life into a blessing. Can you open your mouth and speak to the Lord? Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your 
Abraham, he would do whatsoever to proclaim the gospel anywhere, anytime. What should I say? Should I talk about Daniel? Daniel! options when I rose and laid my prayer mat I said bowed and called upon the name of the Lord I knew my doom was looming near and near to the, the east I surfaced the window but I worship with ease and then taking me to the king and Throwing me to the lion's den. No! No! I wasn't expecting a miracle. I meant to die. I was fed there by the three Hebrew men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know them. Do you ever think I was meant to serve under Darius? Nebuchadnezzar, which of a ruler is that face? Do I speak of Esther? Where is Just one encounter. 
all right your generation that keep asking for another after another and another you are never satisfied you are never satisfied it is good at least it keeps you striving for more but the button here is you sit right here and you keep asking for more and more and more and you never get out there people are dying they seek to be healed and when we saw this it gripped our hearts it took me one encounter with jesus i i was off to the streets I, I took the gospel to the Gentiles and not just we. Oh, Peter, a disciple, a general, a general with a mission art. Stephen, Philip, Andrew, but and all, all of the gospel. For this same gospel. James was the first to be killed. King Herod had him killed by the sword of Jerusalem. Andrew traveled north to the modern day Russia and through Turkey and Greece. There was Sina in the Philip traveled North Africa and Asia. Eventually, he was killed brutally. He was killed. She went to talk about Daniel. And Thomas traveled several times. But eventually, he would not have for the same fate, for the same custom. Matthew was a tax collector. He would have stayed the same, but he left all with Jesus. And he, he was stabbed to death. He was stabbed to death right in Africa. He was stabbed right on his chest. And Thomas, just like Matthew, he was also stabbed. But he, it was continuous and continuous by four soldiers. Four soldiers. For the same gospel. And John, the only one who seems to have escaped death in the hand of people, but didn't escape death in the hand of God. He suffered all his life. You know, I think dying early is better. I think dying early is better. Eventually, he died in Turkey and was buried. So we talk about Peter. Peter, my friend, he was crucified in Rome under the persecution of Emperor Nero. And the only request, the only request he could make was not so that he would be released, but that he would be crucified upside down. All for this gospel, and I. And him, Paul, escaped at several times, suffered diseases, torments, and torture. He, he writes in 2 Corinthians 11 to 5. I, I know you've read it. Three times I was shipwrecked, once I spent the whole day, and night and day I drift to sea. He established churches' hand, supervised them closely, sent the letters to them as often as he could alongside one another. 
the church of Corinth, Galicia, Ephesus, Philippi, Colossia, Thessalonica, and they finally was beheaded in Rome. Many of these testimonies are of people from far you've read about. But you know me, at least you heard about me. My name is Rayhan Bonke. The one who spent our spent in Africa. They say God drew me, saved or opened 1.6 million people, but I say he did even much more. The healings, miracles, signs and wonders was not because I was anointed, but because I was available. Like how we always say, miracles begins with us and then affect our surroundings. And miracles happen when we mysteriously decide to forsake all and focus on God and His people. Hey dear, I got you. I understand you. But you're not just a woman. You're a warrior. I think you need someone. Deborah! I laugh when I hear women talk about themselves being so small. Do you remember me at all? Ask Barak. Where is Barak? Maybe he could testify if I ever felt being a woman. I let troops unashamed and unafraid as clappy does if in all this I ever failed in my duty as a wife I was not only an average wife but a wife with the mission's heart of a warrior and I may seem too fierce for you but have you heard of Susan Wesley? She was a softer version of myself. Her battlefront was her home. Susan, Susan, Mother. tell her, tell them. I wasn't much of many things. I simply trailed along the steps of mothers like the boy. Just that it was intentional to groom my family for the gospel. So while she walked through the heart of the missionary warrior, I lived as a wife and a mother. But not an average wife, but a missionary wife. My home was my mission's ground. John Wesley, just Wesley, you know them. later, I had a funny grocery and all. Oh, Ketrin. Sweet, pure Ketrin. She was saying, I do not have anything, but I bring me nothing to you, Lord. worthy enough to charge the face of the entire world. You can be more. You can do. You can take the gospel to the entire nation. What more can I say? For the time of your need to mention others, Or a Robert Van Presby, Reverend Ajayi Crowder, Reverend Harry Thompson, and his beloved missionary wife, Sarah Thompson of Abel Kuta. Benson Peter Hosa, David Livingstone, I can go on. For they, true, for this gospel. What righteousness of, of the bonuses? Stop the mouth of lions, quench violence of fire, 
out of weakness. We're rooted, strong. What's violent in fight, don't to fly the hands of the humans. Women received their dead.
Thank you, Father. Okay, we have a very serious matter to deal with today. Very serious matter. Do to me what you want. Do to me what you want. Make me just a man you want to show. Do to me. You are the show Baba Baba Make me just the man You are the show chapter 3 verse 3 listen carefully I, I want to share some hmm, serious things with you this afternoon and I want to listen very well I have been trusting the Lord to reveal to us the missing pillars in our faith. When you compare history, you compare the early church with our current state in the church, you will know that there are some building blocks that are missing. And it's very important that we begin with the foundation. Let's know, could it be that the building blocks are our foundational issues? So this afternoon, I, I want to take us on a journey from the beginning. Touching the tenets of our faith. Let's know what really happened. As you all know, I'm about to show you on the missionary's heart. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Pray in the spirit wherever you are. Just pray in the spirit. I'm trusting God for the liberty of the spirit. The supply of the spirit. There's an atmosphere I'm waiting for. Lord, have mercy now.
unto thee except a man the born of water and of the spirit cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Listen carefully. Our journey, because we cannot talk about a missionary without discussing being born again. Being born again. And I'm going to explain to you why it is very important that we begin from this. Because we, we have those who are you know let me share with you. Uh, yesterday, yesterday I was in my sitting room in the afternoon and I went into a vision and I was sharing something. Sometimes one of the ways God speaks to me is to see myself teaching. So in a, I, most times when God wants to show, teach me something, in a dream, either in the dream of the night or in a vision, I find myself teaching that thing. So, I, I, I was in a, a vision and I was teaching on something and this is it. This is what I was showing that that there is a difference between being born again and being born organized. Now, you know, that was the first time I heard that in my life. <laughs> it was yesterday in the afternoon in my sitting room that being born again and being born organized. And what does that mean? There's a difference between you someone being born again and now you look at that it is a difference between someone being a christian and being christianized there is a difference between being a chinese and speaking chinese I don't you may not be a chinese man but you could be speaking chinese you may not be a christian but you could speak christianese i feel now keep it low so in that same vein Somebody could born againize you, you begin to behave like those who are born again, but you are not born again. And as a matter of fact, when I was studying and meditating on this, I also discovered that more accurate than born again, please follow me carefully, is being born anew. Hey, are you sure you're with me now? So, the born again, I even discovered that born again is not as strong as the word born anew because you are now a new creature 
not just a rebranded person, not just that someone is born again. Hey, I shall do that. No, I, I used to say that to understand the Bible, you need to understand English. If you don't understand English, I will counsel you to read Bible in your dialect. You know, I, I have different versions of the Bible on my phone. I have amplified other. There's one I trust God to touch a little of it today. The uh, Nigerian pigeon version. So let's start, let's read it to understand this thing. So you born born anew. You are a new creature. You are not just born again. You are born anew. So in that revelation, I also saw that the, when the Bible is speaking in Romans chapter ten verse nine, the, uh, the, in that revelation, I was getting this explanation. Um, Romans chapter ten verse nine, and if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, someone say thy mouth. Now in that vision. Uh, what I saw was uh, I found myself teaching on what is called the your factor your factor confessing with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe with your heart that God raised God has raised him up from the dead and thou shall be saved that means nobody can lead you to salvation by just confessing on you nobody can believe you into salvation you must obey the your factor, the thy factor. You confessing with your mouth. That's what sometimes they tell you. Say after me. So that you can have your name registered as someone who confesses with his mouth, who believes his heart. Why am I going all of this? I noticed that our generation is becoming so noisy. So noisy that we are running away from the tenets of our faith. Things that please these people. Some years back, I think I was in year one or there about, I told God if they put a gun on my head and say, Jesus, all your life, I say, Jesus, I'm telling you, I will deny you. I will deny you because I did not see, I don't know, as I then, what the apostles knew. How could these guys, the Bible speaking, he said in Hebrews, they offered some of them deliverance and they rejected it. Why? that they may obtain a better resurrection so until you see that better resurrection to not deny jesus is a risk because as a matter of fact to begin to walk in their level of conviction you must have that level of revelation what did they see how come they were so strong in the lord so we need to begin from foundation could it be that we have those who are Christianized but not Christians? Could it be that we have those who are born againized but not born again? So let's begin with you need to be born again first. Thank you, Jesus. Mark chapter 1 verse 7. Let's take it gradually. Mark chapter 1 verse 7. Hmm. Are you there? Mark chapter 1 verse 17, rather. Mark 1 17. So listen carefully. I want us to go on through the journey of the disciples and the apostles. And let's start from where Jesus called them. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. I will make you to become fishers of men could it be that we have people that became fishers of men that they were not made to become I will the first question come follow me actually there are people that their journey of faith only ended at follow me they have not moved to that point of, I will make you. Maybe they were, being, they were in the process of making, but they did not become. Or they became, but never reached the level of being fishers of men. Now, think about this. You are meeting a person for the first time, and the next thing you are saying is that, follow me, is like saying, give your life to Christ, then you are going to ministry. I will make you fishers of men. Actually, when I use the word ministry, 
in the Bible they didn't use the word ministry. If I if I had my way, I'll replace the word ministry with missions. Because missions supers the word mission is deeper than the word ministry. The word you know, there, are, there are weak words we use now. For instance, the word discipleship is deeper than mentorship. So maybe one of the issues we're having is all of this change of words and here and there. So is that make it to become fishers of men, not ministers of God, not men of God, fishers of men. So the first time they were called, they were called into assignment. Are you following me to this point? Are you sure that with me to this point? Then John 21, from verse 1, something happened. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed him himself. Keep going. There were together Simon and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee and the two others of his disciples. Simon said unto them, I do what? And Sammy, I do what? I need to hear of you. I do what? When he called them, what did he call them to be? Fishers of men. Now you could see that there is a link here. But the first one was fishers of men. But here is fishers of fishes. Now you now see a man who was going for a greener pasture. Where was he called? He was called from the sea while he was catching fishes. But now is he going back to that place? They said unto him, We also go with thee. And he entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. Keep going. Keep going. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew not that he was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children. Someone say, Children. I can say, Children. You all know that Peter was not Jesus' mate. <laughs> Are you aware? When it comes to age, he looked at him and said, Children, as long as the hair remains uh, a child, it differs not from a slave. So, being a child here is not about age. You can be in faith for 20 years. And when Jesus sees you, what will you say? Praise God. Jesus is a miracle working God. Ah, what did he do for you? Could you imagine? I went a fishing. And I didn't know what happened. I caught nothing. But Jesus appeared. From nowhere. He appeared from nowhere. And he say, he said, my son, cast down. <laughs> and suddenly there was multiplication. And everybody will celebrate. Everybody will celebrate. Then Jesus will come to you and said, Simon Peter, lovest thou me more than these miracles? Lovest thou me more than this prosperity? And he said, Ah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he said unto him, Hey, feed my what? My lambs. Feed my lambs. So what of me? No. As at when I call you, you are not in the agenda. Your place is to be fishers of men. Your place is to feed the lamb. But you left the assignment to go catching fish. I will multiply for you. That is why one of the ah oh God may it never happen in my life that when I arrive heaven, I will arrive from the dinner. Ah, you know the dinner Jesus had the dinner of fishes with them after the multiplication and when men are sharing their exploits they ask you bro what have you done tell us share your testimonies with us 
and all that you will say is how Jesus multiplied fishes. All that you will say is how we made your business prosper. All that you will say is how you made your academics prosper. But there is something you did not hear. Peter will call you aside when you get to heaven. He said, he didn't ask you, love us down me more than this. Because the same me that multiplied the fishes, I'm the one asking you that do you love me more than this? Could it be that our generation is celebrating the fishes miracles? That our seas are bringing out more fishes? And we keep testifying about that. We keep celebrating that. But we're not here. Love is down me. He said, I love you. He said, feed my lambs. Keep going. Someone said, feed my lambs. And he said unto him again, second time, Simon of Jonas. Love is down me. He said unto him, he, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he said unto him, what again? Feed my sheep. Not just lambs feed my sheep Jesus has left the that miracle line long time ago he's going to assignment see you know why I'm sharing this with you sometimes it, it may sound discriminatory to say and on scripture to say that Jesus does not love you more than his disciples because he knew disciples but let's speak in the manner of men more than you if he could tell his disciples that forget about these fishes and look to the assignment I think if you get to heaven from the dinner table you will regret you will regret because there is another stage after that feed my lamb feed my sheep and he said I love the verse keep going keep going fast and he, he said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, love us down more than this. Peter was grieved. Why are you asking me this thing three times now? I thought I have said, when you check the Hebrew rendition or the Greek rendition, the first, the Greek precisely, the first, the love that Jesus was talking about was talking about agape. When you check, the other one he was answering, the one Peter was answering with is filio. Feelings. Feelings. Love is beyond feelings. As much as feeling is part of love. The love that Jesus is talking about is beyond the feelings that you have in the place of worship. Say, love us down me. Third time, he wanted Peter to shift from that level of feelings. And he said, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said unto him, feed my sheep. Let's keep going. There's something I want to show you. This discussion is a very well discussion. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, now, listen to this discussion. Listen to this discussion. Very, very, I saw today. When thou wast young, thou givest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. You know, see, King James is, may not be confusing, but just follow. Just follow. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands. Ah, I wish I had time to explain. And another shall give thee, and carry thee whither thou goest. Now, let me tell you what this thing means. Go to verse 8, 19. Guess all this is well discussion. Verse 19. He, this speaky, one I want to read together loud. One to go. This speaky signifying what death he should glorify God. Eh? And he said what? And when he had spoken this, what did he say? Follow me. What was he discussing with Peter about? I want to I want to hear what was he discussing with Peter about? Someone said death. I can't say death. What kind of discussion is this? Did you see where he started from? He started with the fact he multiplied fishes for him. And he brought it to the point of assignment. After that, he said he was talking, discussing his death. What kind of Jesus is this? Do you ever think? They, this is a man to follow. You are meeting this man who says he's your disciple and who says your savior. And the next discussion is having with you is the discussion of how you will die. That is the 
same Jesus we said, I, Jesus, I will not die. I will live long. I will live. And that's Jesus. <laughs> He's the one discussing somebody's death. He's a right hand man. Could it be that the early churches, this was the discussion they have with Jesus? He said, Follow me. And first of all, you need to check. When someone says you follow him, you better ask, Where are you going? Jesus, this is a man that was going to the cross to die. He now saying, Follow me. Follow me to where? Follow me to where I'm going. Where are you going? I'm going to die. And guess how Peter died? By the cross. Excuse me. When you say, Jesus, I follow you, what did you mean? Follow him to where precisely? Are you following him to the sea? To the sea? Where you multiply the fishes for you? Excuse me, we need to check. Where are we following Jesus to? Oh, Jesus, I need to think first. Where are you following Jesus to? Because each time you decree, Jesus, I follow you. Wherever you go, follow, follow. I will follow Jesus. Anyway, eh, I will follow him. And Jesus is like, what, what is he saying? Because, do you know where I'm really going? Oh, perhaps, what will follow him to heaven? But what did he follow to heaven? Could it be that it is because of this? You know, he told his disciples, the day he told them, follow me, follow me. If people have known that, they have told them, be careful. That man that is asking you to follow him, you better check where he's going. The same way he told Peter, follow me. And Peter, Peter was crucified. This same man, you know, somebody will advise you, be careful, be careful. This same man, Nathaniel followed him. Go and check. This same man, eh? all the people that were close to him, they died terrible deaths. A young guy who was on his own, and they said they are looking for Dickens. And they appointed him. Go and check Stephen. How did he die? They were stoning him by following this man. Only for him to lift up his eyes. Guess who he saw? Jesus, our protector. He was seeing him. The first stone. They thought maybe, <laughs> maybe the Lord was going to deliver him. Bam! Second one. Okay, maybe the Lord knows what he's doing. Maybe it's the will of the Lord for him to just until his eyes got open. He was dying. Then he saw Jesus standing. Excuse me, beloved. Is it that same Jesus we are following? Could it be? Because I'm still trying to, I want us to just go to the Bible and check where did we miss it? Could it be? Because the Bible speaks of another Jesus. We need to be very sure if it's the same Jesus that the apostles follow, we are following. Because all those guys he asked to follow. They did not sing the songs that we are singing now. See, love is down me more than this. Let's check someone who called Paul. Because Paul too. That guy called Paul. He also followed. Philippians 1 verse 19. Now, before you even get there, let's ask where God called him. Acts chapter 9 verse 1. Acts 9 verse 1 and Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord went on to the high priest keep going fast and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of this way whether there were men or women he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem and as he journeyed, he came near 
Damascus and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him Saul, Saul why persecutest thou me? and he said what did he say? who art thou? what? I can't hear you who art thou what? maybe I'm too far from you who art thou what? Who art thou what? Someone say Lord. Someone say Lord. Think about that question. Who art thou? Lord. I think about that. Uh, how do you know I'm Lord? Who told you I'm Lord? I need to explain a principle here for you. The principle is this. You must first know what is the will of God to know what the will of God is. <laughs> you must first know what is the will of God to know what the will of God is. Okay. Let me give you an instance. Are you sure you are following me at this point? Imagine me having a dream and see myself marrying a lady. Hmm? Me like this, no, not in the past, currently. A different lady. If I wake up, do you expect me to say, Oh Lord, what are you saying? Answer me. Do you think I will say, Oh Lord? What are you telling me? What is it? Would I pray that prayer? Excuse me. I said, I saw. Why would I pray that prayer? Because immediately I wake up. I don't think I need to think in two seconds to know that I am married to a lady called Fina. You right? And is the. Now, what is the will of the Lord? Now, can the will of the Lord. First of all, as a matter of fact, before we. You know, I am talking about two things. What is the will of the Lord? Then what the will of the Lord is? I, are you sure you know this point? Before you know what the will of the Lord is, you need to know what the nature of the Lord is. Can God ever tell you that? Can the will of God permit me now to marry another person? Because I'm already married. Is that not so? To start praying about it, shows i don't know what is the will of the lord there are some asking for what the will of the lord is on the matter who understand what the english i'm speaking because we have christians who are seeking the will of the lord that is not in alignment with what the will of the lord is ah oh, god are you with me so imagine stephen saying oh lord deliver me from the stones. Stephen, you don't understand. You are asking for the will of the Lord that contradicts what the will of the Lord is. Uh, are you anybody now? So, the will of the Lord for you, when he said, he said, follow me. Wait, did you hear him? The man that said you follow you, where did he go? So, Stephen now said, Lord, forgive them for the no not. Ah, who said that? Who made that statement first? Who made that statement first? Okay, let's now think. What if Stephen had said, Oh God, let fire come down from heaven and consume those stony me. Uh, who does that look like? Jesus and his disciples were going to Samaria and the disciples said, Let us go down like Elijah in the book of Elijah. Let's go down. He said, Oh God. The day I asked you to follow me, you did not, you did not listen very well. You don't know who the mouth is so spiritual the next time Jesus asks you to follow you you better ask well you ask him what does it mean to follow you because you ask someone say oh God you know see I can't talk about missionaries if I don't start these are the blocks that I'm missing because someone said now imagine a Christian oh God if this year Eh? I don't gain admission. I'll drop my Bible. 
Which Jesus are you talking to? So, so when you have that kind of dream, is it a dream sponsored by the loss of the flesh or the lust of the eyes or the pride of life? It is there you, that's why you not think about it. You just tell Satan, I know who I'm following. So here you are, there are people waiting for you, seeking the Lord. And the Lord is calling you to minister to them, to witness to them. Then suddenly a call came for a bigger job. Then you say, oh God, what do you want? Now, follow me carefully. Before you ask for what the will of the Lord is, you must know what the will are. Ah, what is the will of the Lord? Hey, are you sure you are following me to this point now? So now Paul says, Who are you, Lord? Now I don't know who is the Lord, but I know what the Lord is. I don't know who is the Lord, but I know what is the Lord. Hmm. He said, I'm a man of the authority. I tell one to go, he goes. I tell another one to come. I understand authority. When the kind of things that just happened, I know it has to be a Lord to do that, but I don't know who. So Paul now says that, I see that some of you are superstitious. As I was walking through, I saw people writing to unknown God. There is a God, but they don't know who is the God. Okay, this is my concern. Could it be that Christians don't know what is the Lord? That we give our life to Jesus the Savior. But we did not give our life to Jesus the Lord. Why? We don't know who is the Lord. Or we know who is the Lord, but we don't know what is the Lord. Hey. So that's why someone say, I this is the will of the Lord for me. But he doesn't know what is the will of the Lord. It contradicts. So he now said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, Now know who is the Lord. I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Keep going. And he trembling. He did what? He did what? Trembling. Because that is how you respond to the Lord. And astonished said, Lord. Guess what he said? Lord. What did he ask? What will thou have me to do? You know why it was easy for him? Before he knew who was the Lord, he knew you what is the Lord? Because a savior serves you without seeking anything from you. But the Lord seeks everything. I said, now that I've met the Lord, I know you cannot meet the Lord without he giving you something to do. Now that I've met you, what would you have me do? How come you say you have met the Lord and you do nothing? Did you really meet him? Or you don't know what is the Lord. Or you don't know what is the Lord. Then, then you, you, for years, you say you are a Christian. You are a Christian and there is nothing, no assignment that you are attending to. Did you meet the Lord? So imagine him. He said, what would you have me do? And he said, arise, go into city and thou shall be told what thou shall do keep going thou shall be told what thou shall do i may not be the one to tell you but you will meet a man of god who will tell you what to do in case you are not saying oh god what shall i do oh god speak to me um but there is the assignment already are you feeling myself this is what people miss it even jesus he told him go and meet a man he will tell you what to do so the guy is on a retreat praying. Oh Lord, what would you have me to do? His pastor said, This is the assignment. Go and do it. He said, No. Let the Lord speak. But the Lord said, Go and meet a man. And the men which journey with him, keep going, keep going. Verse 10. Verse 10. And Saul arose from the earth and went, okay, keep going. Where where where? Kegud, Ananias. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias and to him said the Lord in the vision Ananias and he said behold I am here Lord keep going keep going keep going fast and the Lord said unto him arise and go to the street 
which is called straight and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tassos for behold he prayed keep going and had seen in the vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight keep going then Ananias said Lord I have keep going I want you to take it to where he, the Lord told him he said I have shown you what you shall suffer verse what verse 15 right verse 16 go there go for I will show him what how great things he will do what he must suffer for what what kind of calling is this he will show you what great things not just things great things he must suffer for my name's sake bless me for your name's sake anoint me for your name's sake give me a job for your name's sake but here is a man excuse me which bible are we using before we miss it too far let's get it right how come Jesus is talking like this to these people? What happened? Are you sure we are on the right path? Because the men, the disciples that he met, look how they ended. Now, look at Paul that he's just meeting now. The next thing he's talking about is he will suffer. This is our Christianity without suffering. Which version is that? Are you sure we are safe? This one that even threatened God. If he doesn't answer your prayers on time. Because we cannot talk about missionary. <laughs> if we don't settle this matter. Let's be sure we met the Lord. Because it, it, is, it, it, it is only the Lord that can send you into mission field. The Savior loves you too much to send you out. But the Lord would. Philippians 1 verse 19. Are you, are you sure you are okay with Bible study? Are you, are you okay with Bible? Let me tell you why I read Bible a lot. I don't want trouble. I want to be sure I'm the, on the right track. Because we can start talking motivations here. Motivations here. And we are far into hell. So let's be sure we are on the right track. He said, for I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer. And the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ. Verse, according to my earnest expectations and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it's by life or by what? By death. See, have you noticed that these old Christians, their ways of communications are totally different from our own? So different. That you now see a Christian, a rain is falling, you cannot go enter it. You know, I, I heard a story of a man, Pastor Dublev Kumui, some years back, on his on his on his wedding day. The reception was taking too much time. He left them to go and do evangelism. I, I heard of Omar Akbar, he was going to a crusade and his children had an accident. I think they were either drawing the ocean or something. And, and he was, they asked, he asked, oh, what happened? Is this your children? It's okay, please attend to them. He went for a crusade. Ah. This same WF Kumi, the day his wife died, he still went to preach. Who are these people? Miss Lesser was about having her wedding to her, the, the, the man she loved and there was a call for mission and she went she left the place who are these people is it the same Jesus they met or the Jesus that Judas met I remember when you know one day I was 
preparing for that was on, on Saturday, on Sunday night. On Sunday night, we were preparing for Bible study, and I was also preparing for a message on Monday. I wanted to preach somewhere in a, in a department in the faculty, and then they called me and told me that my mom has gone to be with the Lord. And I was preparing a message to preach in the morning. And they called me the night. And I heard, it's now your turn to prove the love. That morning, I stood up. I went for evangelism. Moving from one class to the other, I was preaching. It was a tough thing for me, but I said, you know, let me have a taste of this. When I finished preaching, I told my friends, I'm traveling back home. They said, what happened? I said, my mom passed on last night. And they screamed. And you are preaching? You are preaching? I, I had to do I had to do that. Nope. Ah. It's more that we are talking about here. There is a, something I needed to taste. What did this people? What did they have? That we did not. I was organizing a program, a program before she passed on. She was in the mortuary. I had to travel. Now, I'm not telling you this to make you, I'm just to tell, make you understand that. You see this timber? You see this thing? It will cost you all. Because men have paid. Because when you get to heaven, they will ask you, what has your faith cost you? What was the cost of your faith in your time? May God forbid that all that we are going to share is how Jesus made our seas produce enough fishes. What can you let go? You now say, for me to live is what? Is Christ. And to die is what? What a well statement. How could someone say, for me to live is Christ? To die is gain. How many of us can say that? Are you even living for Christ before we talk about dying for Christ? When, when he said the things that you will suffer for my sake, right? When your life is put on a balance and the settings of that balance is only pick the things that were done for the Lord's sake. How many things will read? The Bible says some persons will be saved through fire. Though their souls will be saved, but their labors will be burned. Because all that they labored for was for self. For self. If I start measuring the missionaries, we need to know their convictions. Because as the specialists were saying, we are learning, you know, we say, oh God, I'll give me the mantle of the fathers. Give me the mantle of the Mary's lesson. Give me the mantle. Is mantle you are looking for? You better check for the, you better check their battles. I know what I'm preaching is not, it's not, it's not in vogue. But I can tell you, look at the crops of Christians that we have now. Look at the crops of Christians we have now. And do you think in your widest imagination that this kind of people debate about tithe? Answer me. Do you think they will debate about tithe? You will see a Christian. What is all his knowledge? What is debating about is tight. Tight. Ten percent. Whereas these people they gave their life. I they are, they, let me ask you. Do you think the disciples of Jesus pay tight? <laughs> Do you think they pay tight? They give their all. If they eat, they eat to live for Jesus. So I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer ah. That is, but Christ now, you know that one day when I saw that scripture, I look at it as I say, I can't say that now. I can't say that now. That I've been crucified with Christ. Yes, if you want to talk about issue of salvation, 
we can say that that yes we are crucified with christ but when it comes to the life of sacrifice can now say that i've been crucified with christ Lord, what would you have me do? Ride on me, O King Jesus. Ride on me, O my Lord. Ride on me, O my Master. Where you go, I will go. Ride on me. Ride on me, O my Lord. Ride on me, O where you go, I will go. Ride on me, O King Jesus. Ride on me, O King Jesus. Ride on me, O my Lord. Ride on me, O my Master. Where you go, I will go. Ride on me, O King Jesus. Ride on me, O my Lord. Ride on me, oh my master. Where you go, I will go. One day we're singing in a rehearsal. You are the love of my life. You are that I cling to. You mean more than this world. That one, there's no problem. But the problem started coming was, I won't trade you for silver. No, I won't trade for riches. Excuse me. See, far there's money we are talking about here. It's money we are talking about here. I won't trade you for what? Why are you going to school? Why are you working? I said, Are you sure we mean this song? If you mean it, if you mean it, I dare you to sing it. And nobody sang it again. Because we we because the sound of the keyboard makes us forget what we are singing. I won't trade for riches. Wow. You are what do you got this so seriously? You are my head. I won't trade for riches. The same you that say you don't come to church again because the job, the job that you are doing now, it doesn't allow you to come. Are you required? Yes, I, I, but I can't go for reasons because because of my job. Then you now come on Sunday morning. I won't trade you for riches on tone. You are. And God is saying, don't confuse me. Don't confuse me. said master let them sit one seat on your left and one seat on your right he said eh, huh? do you know what you're talking about can you drink the cup that i'll drink he said ah we can he said okay as a matter of fact you cannot even escape the cup for the cup you will definitely drink and go and check their history because when you are reading king james you don't know history you will think it ended with king james because in the Bible, they don't tell us how they died. But you see those two boys, that their mother brought them, go and check how they died. Somebody is now asking, why are you talking death, 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 death today? Are you a, are you a prophet of doom? Then go and ask the Bible. I'm just telling us that the artists we are missing. Something is happening, is wrong with our faith. A man called the Believing Stone. He left his own country down to Africa. A white man. Think about that. Where is the best place for a white man to stay? It's not his country. Compared to Africa, as at that time, malaria was like coronavirus. He came to Africa. 
just like Paul. That is a man that knew what Paul meant when he said, I fought with the beast of Ephesus because he fought with the beast of Africa. He came to Africa, and I want to know that how did he come in the early church? Those churches, when you give your life to Christ, the next thing they introduce you to is missions. Missions, not ministry. <laughs> missions. So those days they make an altar call. If you are going to Africa, come. Which Africa come? And as a day, Africa is called the grave of white men. So when they say come for altar call, come. If you want to go to Africa, it's as simple as saying come to go and die. He came to Africa, labored in Africa. I may not have time to go through all of these stories. And he died in Africa. When he was, they wanted to take his body, the Africans said, No. You can't, you could take his body, but he drop his heart for us. They opened his chest, brought out his heart, and they buried his heart under a tree in Africa. Because where the treasure of a man is, that's where his heart is. But guess what? When they took him, they discovered that when they shake his body, there were cuts on his body. And they asked, what happened? They said, any land they went to, he will have a blood covenant with them. He will cut a part of his hand and drop the blood. And he told the people of the land, there are other missionaries that are coming after me. Have a covenant with me that you people will open the door to your land to them. They will have a covenant of blood with him. When he gets to another land, he will cut his hand. The blood will drop. He said, promise me, there are others coming behind me. He will open the land for them. Hmm. Such men Eh? they were not just saved by the blood of Jesus their blood went for it when he said follow me just remember the man that said you follow him his blood went his blood went huh. you know those men they are always caught in between two options one there is a road and from where they are standing and where their grave is, is longer. But on that road, there are, no, there are no souls. There is another road where their grave is closer. But there are souls on that road. This man, they shows the path with souls, even though their graves are closer. Than choosing the path where their graves are further with no souls. This way, the mindset that the likes of William Carey came, came, he went into missions and lost all his children. I want us to share, could it be? Because if we want to analyze this, we were based on our current state of our current theology. Could it be that they were foolish? Could it be that they were foolish? If they were not foolish, then who are the fools? Sir, these people, they, they value souls more than their safety. I know why I'm talking to you guys like this. The people of the other, other religion, they know this thing. Because any religion where martyrdom is not taught, Hmm? That religion will not last. Believe what I'm telling you. Any religion whose believers are not ready to die for their belief will not last. Check what Jesus preached. Check what the disciples preached. And check what we are preaching. Then, if you think what we are teaching is better, check the crop of Christians we have now.
we must go back to the foundation of the gospel. Because how does heaven feel when he hear the testimonies that we share? When will somebody come and tell us, I went to a land where nobody was a Christian, when nobody was a Christian, but today there are people basking in the Lord. Those are the kind of testimonies they share. God is releasing missionaries to different fields. Today we have our uh, mommy and mommy Agayu came with, with a, a bus filled with teenagers. You know, when I see people like that, I'm wowed. Because, because if you see the kind of things the devil is doing among teenagers, you will know that that area is a mission field. Drink from my heart. 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 I have a dream to offer. Drink from my heart. I have a dream. From my heart, yeah, eat from my heart. Oh, eat from my heart. Eat from my heart. Oh, eat from my heart. tells you, you will not be famous. You will just be hidden for my sake. Would you do that? You live in a place and souls are perishing and you go a fishing. Huh. Then you go there and start praying for the lambs. You go to the sea 
catching fish and say, oh God, save the sheep. Save the lambs. And he said, I'm an intercessor. I'm an intercessor. Joke. You can't be an intercessor from the sea. You can't be an intercessor from the sea. David Livingstone would have remained in Britain and been interceded for Africa. Mary Slessor would have remained in Scotland and been interceding for Africa. If all that we had were intercessors, Africa would not have been saved. There are people these days who, who pride themselves to be intercessors when away from the mission field. Let me tell you some of these people. A man called Hudson Taylor. St. Taylor was a missionary in, from two-story beauty, pregnant. And she was, no, you would think God would protect him, right? She was wounded severely. She still stood up. Those were the soldiers of Christ, sir. Maybe we are civilians of Christ. Maybe. What message did they hear? Is what I'm trying to find out. Who were their pastors? Spent his life and was spent. Till dead, he still have his children. The ninth generation are still there as missionaries. Is it the believing son that I've told you? Is it Mary Slesson? Mary Slesson was raped in Africa, in Calabar. She was raped there. We need to check the Jesus we are following first. Let's check. Let's check. Who are we behind? All they were deceived. And we are the wisest. William Carey a man sent to Indians, he said, to know the will of God, you need an open...